Psychologists believe, and you don't have to be a psychologist to believe this, that a person always looks back, agonizing over his past and can't break free of its hold on him. He dwells on his mistakes and on what he should have done differently, feeling the pain of it over and over, unable to break this vicious cycle. True. We have a letter from a lonely elderly woman who writes how scared and lonely it is to live in this particular pandemic. She's home alone, unable to escape the thoughts of the past, getting divorced and the two abortions she's had, one because of her career and the other when she decided that she was too old to give birth. She writes it so beautifully. And here I am alone, it is cold outside my window, cold inside, and I feel terribly cold in my heart. The thoughts of my sins and mistakes, there's no escaping them. That's how she writes it. So my question is, first, what should I say to someone who is constantly looking back to the past and lives in this past? Secondly, why are we given all this? This too is a correction. It's a correction? Yes, this is also a correction, something that a person experiences for the past. Although there is no need to agonize, there was nothing of his own in it. How can a person understand this? It's impossible. Here you'd have to work on yourself to agree with the Creator. For an ordinary person, it is practically... But it will make my life easier if I understand this, that it was done not by me, that I was led this way. But you can't just do it, turn a switch of some kind. True, you can't, but this person is so... No, no. It's given to her on purpose. It's neither her thoughts nor her feeling. Not hers? No. It is through her system, through her body, that all these sensations must pass. And in this lies her redemption in a way. But it turns out she didn't make any mistakes. It doesn't matter. It is given to us for our correction, as you say, right? A person must go through it, relive his life again, come back and realize that he's made many mistakes, although it wasn't him who made them? It wasn't him who made them, and neither is it him now trying to condemn or justify it with his consciousness. None of it is him, but it all goes through him. So let it happen. And why shouldn't one look back to his past? Why is it considered prohibited? Because there is no sense in that. There's no sense in that? Really? None whatsoever. But can one convince himself that there's no sense in looking back to their past and stop doing it? He will still look back until he corrects himself. Till when? Until one fully agrees with the Creator. And this is a complete adhesion with the Creator. That is for everything. For the past. For the good and bad for absolutely everything. When one justifies the Creator absolutely in everything, this is the final correction of man. Meaning that one must come to this truth? Yes. To fully justify. To completely agree with. With what has happened and what is happening now. Yes. This is called complete correction of your egoism. A person should not look back. He should not agonize or reproach himself for something he did, nor praise himself for anything. That is, you should not keep account of when you did something well or times you fell short of. To associate with my life being of either a hero or a sinner. My life is not mine, and now finally I can say that what I have lived was not lived by me. It was lived through me. So it went through me, did it? Through me, yes, but it wasn't me. That's how I was led, right? Yes, that's how I was led. My life, this is how I saw it in my dreams. It wasn't me. It all passed like a dream. So we have to agree with it. Nothing else is required. All we need is to agree? Yes, only to agree. And this too doesn't even matter. As always, you stick to the truth and that's all. Yes, and that doesn't matter either. Whatever is done to a person is done, and what he feels during it is what he feels. It is not him who feels, but what is felt for him, in a way. Then tell me please, in conclusion, what is our life? Our life is a form of existence. Of protein matter? Of protein matter. Really? But still. No, no. We still take from this life its reshimo, memories, impressions, and we keep going. A great number of small grains of egoism, that is, corrupted desires which the Creator has made, gradually goes through its purification, correction, and unification. So these little egoisms, the seven to eight billion that are out there, they live out their lives precisely in order to come to this, as you say, 
hell, purgatory, and paradise, like Dante's. Hell is a feeling, a realization of one's egoism, of its pettiness, and everything else that we can add here. Purgatory is when a person tries to correct it to purify it, and paradise is when one turns his egoism to work in service of others. Of other people? Yes, these are the three stages we have to go through. That is, with all our lifetimes, we are approaching this last, third stage. Yes, therefore, if people understand that these three stages are hell, purgatory, and paradise, that is, the comprehension of egoism, its correction, its proper usage, then everything is fine. We'll keep trying. 